What's up guys, Justin with Fix My PEV, and today I wanna to break down the process specifically for downgrading the Pint X. I did a video on how to use the Pint and Pint X on Locker Tool to downgrade your Pint, and the process actually does apply to the Pint X, so that video was titled for that, but I've had a lot of people ask me how to do it specifically for the Pint X, because when I did it, I did it on a Pint, and I showed a bit of a different process. The process is very similar, so I'll be going through that right now, but I do want to clarify as a disclaimer, None of the tools I will be using are owned or related in any way, shape, or form to fix my PEV. I do a lot of educational content for people, and I show them how to use the tools that people within our community have created, but I am not personally responsible for the development or rollout of any of these tools. So, you might have questions on how to use them, and I can probably help you with those, but the inner workings and the back-end stuff, I have absolutely no clue what's going on there because I am not a developer and I have no relation to these projects whatsoever. That said, I can vouch for them. I can tell you that they work, I can tell you that they're safe, and I can tell you that any advice I give you will be 100% safe to follow. So, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to downgrade the Pinex controller, and I'm gonna give you a disclaimer right now, this does not work for every single Pinex controller. There are differences in bootloader versions, and those bootloader versions can actually make or break the process for you. So. I'm gonna be showing you today on a controller that I know for a fact is actually compatible with the downgrade. And this is a Pinex controller. I have a 7326 hardware version. I am currently running Gemini 5100 firmware. And that's the only time we would really wanna downgrade with a little asterisk. I'm not gonna get into what the asterisk is, but for the most part here, 5100 is the highest firmware version that you'll be able to downgrade from. I know that the Hydrus 5200 just came out for the Pinex and Pine S but that is not going to be applicable to this. Again, asterisk. You can ask me about that if you want. If you're already on 5200, the asterisk does not apply. But if you are on 5100 or lower and you wanna to go to 5200, don't do it on your own. Send me a message, go to fixmypev.com, click on contact us, send me a message, and I can actually give you an option to do the 5200 upgrade in a way that will allow you to downgrade later without using an ST-Link device. So again, without getting into too much of that, I'm gonna go ahead and get back on track here. I will be showing you how to downgrade from Gemini 5100 to Gemini 5076, and we're going to be using two tools. Again, these have no relation to fix my PEV whatsoever, but the first one is FFM wheel. I'm not gonna tell you what FFM stands for. It can stand for whatever you want, but FFM wheel is a clone of Rewheel. Rewheel was shut down after Future Motion reached out to the developers of that project and let them know that it was a violation of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, and they ended up seizing or shutting down that project. There was no further development on that project after that. However, we do continue to use the clone for very beneficial purposes, one of which being what we're gonna do today. So, that's the first thing you need. If you go to Google, and make sure you're in Google Chrome, but if you go to a Google search and you type in FFM wheel, this site is going to be the first one that shows up. It's autumn-bar-0505.on.fleek.co and I'll put these in the description as well. The second tool you want, completely separate development team here, is the Pint and Pinex Unlocker tool, owtk.pages.dev, a lot easier to type in. So, we're gonna start with FFM wheel, and the first thing you want to do, I'm doing things a little bit differently here because I have a controller connected to a bench power supply. Please ignore the color differences here. I have red to black and black to red. That's because I had a completely faulty future motion battery, and I cut off the XT60 from it, and I've been using that to plug into controllers and supply power at will. So if you're not aware, Future Motion's batteries have their XT60 swapped. So in the battery module, it's backwards, but by the time it gets to the controller, it has been swapped to the appropriate orientation. So even though this is black, this is actually positive, and you can see a positive sign on the XT60 on the controller. So I see a plus sign on the left, and then the red is negative. If I look under there, might be covered by the silicone here, but we should have a negative. So that's why I have black for negative, red for positive. In your case, you shouldn't have to worry about this because you will likely be using your battery module. You may not even have your board opened up because it doesn't need to be opened up. So go ahead and turn on your board. I'm gonna turn mine on with my power switch here. And the very first thing that you will want to do, my process is probably gonna get a little bit confusing and messed up, but the first thing you're, you're going to want to do is on FFM wheel, I was going to say go to the flash tab, but before you go to the flash tab, you're going to want to go to resources and you're going to want to click on OTA files, pint slash pint X. And what that's going to give you 
is it's going to give you a zip file. It's going to look like this. I have actually two of them here. I don't need two of them, but it's going to look just like this. You're going to see a little zipper icon and you're going to right click and click extract all. Once you extract all, you're going to have a regular folder that matches the same exact name. You're going to open that and the file 5076 is what you're going to want for the process that we're doing today. 5040 is for the OG pint. Do not use that. 6109 is for the OG GT. Do not use that. The GT sign extractor and the pint sign extractor have nothing to do with what we're doing here today. Do not use either of those. You're going to stick specifically with encrypted firmware or encrypted FW5076.bin, which is for binary. So once you have your file downloaded, you're ready to go to the flash tab. You're going to click connect. You're going to wait for your board to come up here. It may or may not say paired if you've connected with it before. Pair. I'm going to choose the file. And again, I'm going to go ahead and go to that folder that I extracted. I'm going to go to 5076, 5076. I cannot stress that enough. This is the file for PineX. And I'm going to go ahead and click Start Update. If you have never used this before and you've never read this, please read this. Just ignore the fact that it says no PineXs. Because even though this tool is capable of flashing firmware, this is a clone of Rewheel, and Rewheel was made for firmware modification. So it assumes that you should not be using it for the PineX. The Pint and the GT were the only boards available to apply custom patches to. However, we're not applying custom patches. We are simply flashing the firmware, which Rewheel, or FFM wheel in this case, serves as a great way to go ahead and flash firmware. So we're flashing the base firmware. This is exactly how it would be from Future Motion, but this is going to allow us, and I should let you know exactly what it does now, but this is going to allow us to install aftermarket rails. If you get WTF rails from the Float Life or special rails from tech rails or whoever else you might get angled rails from, you will be able to recalibrate your IMU, which will allow you to calibrate the level of those rails. That is the main reason that you would use this. As a secondary use, you can also pair a replacement Pine X BMS, or if your controller broke, you could then install a new controller, connect to that controller, run the calibration after downgrading, and you would be able to pair your existing BMS with the new controller that you swapped in. So there's multiple benefits. And I'm going to go ahead and move on from here. If you've read this, you can go ahead and tap, I understand the risks, please proceed and flash update. Now, I already know this is going to fail. I'm doing this on purpose and you may or may not see why. I'm going to try to explain that as best as I can. Update error, retry update. We're not going to retry, but we just want to have this prepped because it is beneficial to be as quick as possible after you unlock the controller. In my case, probably not going to get it to work the first time. I've been having some trouble and you may run into the same thing, but I'll show you what to do. So I've navigated away from the FFM wheel tab. I'm going to leave it open, but I'm going to go to the Pint and Pinex Unlocker tab, and I'm going to click Connect. We're going to see the same dialog box here. I'm going to tap on the serial number and click Pair. Waiting for the board to respond. You can see it read the hardware and firmware versions. And it said timed out waiting for bootloader version. Try again. I'm going to try again just to show you. It may or may not work. Authentication blob waiting for board to respond. and it did not work. So this would actually just happen over and over and over again. And unfortunately, even though I had this ready, which you'll also want to do, this is going to get messed up because I'm going to have to power cycle the board. What I really want to do here is I want to show you exactly what you should see if it's successful. So I'm going to forget about FFM wheel for a moment. I might have to do something a little tricky here and you could potentially end up having to do it, but I don't recommend doing it and you'll see why, but I'm going to go ahead and power cycle. The board is off. I gave it some time. Capacitors still have a bit of a charge in them, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back on. And on the unlocker tool, I'm gonna to click connect. I'm gonna tap on paired and click pair again. And I'm gonna see if this will actually unlock it right now. Sometimes it does after a power cycle. Did not work this time, but I'm gonna click connect. We'll do it a second time. be really cool if it worked. If not, I will power cycle again and I'll wait a little bit longer. All right, so it didn't work. Power cycle again. In your case, hit your power button, let it turn off. Turn the board back on. Wait a little bit. Gave it about five to seven seconds. I'm going to click connect again. Tap on the serial number, click pair, and I'm going to see if it works here.
So you're seeing that it's easy to get discouraged with this. Don't get discouraged. Make sure that you see a message here. And I mean, other than timed out, I'm going to see if I can show you exactly what you should see. That's my goal in this video is to show you what a successful unlock looks like. So hopefully that happens soon. Timed out. I'm going to refresh. I'm going to power cycle again. I wouldn't anticipate that you would have to do this as many times. It may or may not be impacted by the fact that I have an error 16. Since I'm powering this with a bench power supply, I don't have a BMS connected, so it could be acting a little bit funny. I'm going to turn it back on. And actually, before I turn it back on, I'm going to click connect just so I have the dialog box open quickly. And as soon as I see it, I'm going to try to connect. There it is. Pair. There it is. So this is exactly what you should see. And in your case, you have to be very fast because once this gets unlocked and you go back to FFM wheel, the reason I said to go ahead and have this ready is because if you wait more than, I'd say even like five seconds, it's going to time out. Like I'll try it right now. And the update error is going to come back and you can see that my lights are still flashing red. And if I go back to the unlocker and I click connect and I try to pair, it's probably not going to be successful, but if it is, I'll be super quick to get back to retry. All right. So you can see that it says timed out. Now this is where I'm going to do something that I don't recommend. What you would do is you would deal with this part here. You would check it. It would show you the hardware version, the firmware version. It would tell you the bootloader version. And then if you get a green message that says unlocked FWU mode, ready to flash, you can go ahead and proceed. And you will quickly jump back to the tab and you'll click retry update and it should just start updating the controller, which you'll see on the light bar and you'll see on the screen with a percentage. I'm about to show you that now. But in my case, sort of ignore what I'm doing here, but this unlocker tool does actually unlock the board even if it doesn't give you the green message. If you've already received the green message, then you know you're safe to proceed. But if you get a red message other than timed out where it tells you that the bootloader version was not recognized or that it's incompatible, it will be a lot more pronounced than this message here. Do not proceed because you will break your board. And I believe if you break your board now, especially since Future Motion has newer firmware out, I can help you restore that. So if you happen to catch yourself in a situation where you bricked your board, please send me a message, go to fixmypeb.com, click on contact us and go ahead and send me a message. It'll go straight to my email inbox and I can probably help you out. However, if you notice it beforehand, just don't try it because you can't downgrade if you have an unapproved or unsupported bootloader. Here's where I'm gonna do the fancy thing. I'm gonna go ahead and click connect and right when I get my red message, I'm going to go ahead and just assume that it unlocked and I'm going to go ahead and start my process. So you'll see here again, disclaimer, do not copy me unless you have already seen a green message. I'd still say don't copy me, but if you're going to copy me, make sure that you've already received a green message and you should be okay at that point. But I'm going to go ahead and click connect. It's going to pair and I'm going to wait for the red message this time. I might get lucky and it might turn green, but we'll see. There's my red message. I'm going to go back and retry immediately. Start update. I understand flash and look at that. So I am now flashing. I'm going to wait for this to go all the way to 100% and the controller will reset itself. And after that, I will be on 5076 and I'll be sure to show you that. So I'm going to speed this thing up so that you can see it go through its process. And then I'll be back with you shortly. All right, so the firmware update completed, the controller has restarted, and now I'm back to my error 16, which in my case is good. I'm gonna go ahead and power cycle the controller. You'll wanna do the same. I'll turn it back on. And just for the sake of showing you, you can check on your one wheel app. You'll probably wanna use airplane mode or something. Or if you're on iOS, you can use the float remote app available via test flight. If you don't know how to find that, ask me about it. I'll send you the link but I'm going to use the unlocker tool to show you that I'm on 5076 now. Connect. Wait for it to show up. It's taking its sweet time this time. Make sure I'm not connected here on FFM wheel. There it is. Click pair. You can see my serial number. You can also see board reports, hardware 7326, board reports, firmware. 
5076. Firmware older than 5100, do not need magic, is exactly what it says. So, I have successfully downgraded the controller. At this point, I can go ahead and enter factory mode. I can go ahead and level my rails. If I got aftermarket rails, I can pair the BMS, I can pair a new controller, whatever I need to do. I stated all of that earlier in the video, but you can enjoy the freedoms that you are allowed on Gemini 5076. And if you really want to update back to a newer firmware version, you can do that after leveling your rails and you will maintain the level. Again, if you want to update to 5200 and you're not already there and you think you might want to downgrade in the future, please send me an email. It's a very easy process. If you got this far, you'll be able to do exactly what's needed to be done in that case. And you can go ahead and downgrade in the future if you ever need to. But if you upgrade using the Future Motion app or One Wheel app, you will not be able to downgrade without disassembling your board, using an ST link, restoring from a backup. And when it comes to the Pine X, that is not something that is very easy to do at all. So I don't advise getting yourself in that type of pickle. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. If you are wanting to support me, I have a link to buy me a coffee in the description below. That would be greatly appreciated. It's never expected, but it is greatly appreciated every time. I appreciate you guys no matter what. I hope you're out there having a great time, riding safe, and keeping the stoke alive. Keep fixing.